Hi, I'm Steve Weinreve, and I'm going to show you a great technique to make your portraits pop. This portrait I took, it really was well lit. The exposure was good. I did everything by the book in the raw stage, but it just needs something a little more. Here's the something more. I'm going to show you on the count of three. One, two, three. Look how the model separates from the background. Her hair is silky. The skin glows. The jewelry looks great. Everything is very flattering for the subject, and that's what you want when you do a portrait technique in Photoshop. You want to flatter the subject, and this really works very well. It doesn't take 200 steps like a lot of portrait tutorials that you'll see out there. You can do this in a few steps, follow along with me, and you'll be able to use it at home. So let's get started, and the first thing I'm going to do is delete the uh, the layer group that I used to create that technique for that image to show you, and we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to first create a new layer. So at the bottom of the layers panel, I'm going to click the new layer icon, and that creates a new blank layer. Next, I'm going to fill that layer with 50% gray, and I can do that by pressing Shift Backspace in Windows or Shift Delete on the Mac to bring up the fill dialog. And in the fill dialog, I'm going to choose 50% gray from the contents and click OK. That fills that layer with 50% gray. Then I'm going to set the blending mode of that layer to screen mode. So I'm going to the mode menu at the top of the layers panel and choosing screen. That's one of the lightening modes in the lightening mode group. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'll duplicate it by pressing the shortcut Control J on Windows or Command J on the Mac to duplicate that layer. And then I'm going to set the mode of the duplicate layer to multiply. So multiply blending mode for the duplicate layer. Now we don't need those layers yet, so I'm going to click the visibility icons, the eyeballs next to the layers to hide those and make the portrait layer the active layer. Now we need to make a selection based on the midtones of the image that are going to encompass the skin tones. So I'm going up to the select menu and choosing color range. In the color range dialog, you have a couple of choices. You could choose the skin tones option and tweak the range from there, but I'm going to choose midtones. And in the midtones, I have a, a range of what's called the tonal width. If you've seen that term in Photoshop, the tonal width is the range that's encompassed by these two sliders. And I'm going to expand that tonal width to encompass a little more of the highlights. So I'm going to drag that lighter slider up to about 200. Now, depending on the complexion of your subject, you might go either direction with a darker slider or a lighter slider. We're not trying to make a stark outline be, be around the subject. We really are just trying to encompass most of the skin tones, most of her face and arms and neck here. But it's okay to have shadows and little nooks and crannies that aren't, aren't part of the selection that will be masked. That's okay. You'll, you'll see this will work really quite well. And I'm going to click OK and that loads that selection that was created by our color range command. Now, it's always a good idea when you make a selection to save that selection just in case you need it down the road. So I'm going up to the select menu. I'm going to choose save selection and click OK. That selection is just tucked away as an alpha channel in your channels panel. You don't need to look at it. You don't need to use it right now. But in a week or a month, if you come back to the, this image, you might want to just access that initial selection again to play with it or tweak your image further. Anyway, now I'm going to add a layer mask to the screen layer. So I'm going to make the screen layer visible. And I'm going to click the mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. It's an icon that looks like a, a little thumbnail of a mask, a rectangle with a little circle in the middle that will make a layer mask from our selection. And that adds a layer mask to that layer. Next, I'm going to view that layer mask to blur it. So to view it, we can option click on the Mac or alt click on Windows to view that mask in grayscale. And we can now blur it now that we're accessing the mask. So I'm going up to the filter menu and I'm going to choose blur, box blur. 
And I like box blur for this technique because box blur has a little bit more of a defined edge it, it, than some of the other blurs like Gaussian blur. And you also get a little bit of sort of a halo or double image. It looks very photographic, sort of cheap lens blurish. But again, for this technique, because it has that ability to sort of accentuate the edges a little bit, will work great. I'm going to drag the radius slider up to about 40. And to, that will blur this mask quite a bit. And depending on the resolution of your image, you might want less of a radius or more of a radius uh, to get this much blur. You don't want the mask to be mush. You still want some definition. Click OK. And that now that mask is blurred. And I can uh, Alt-click Windows or Option-click again to view the image in color uh, by Alt or Option-clicking on that mask. Now I'm going to copy the mask up to the multiply layer. So I can make, I'll make that multiply layer visible. And I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key. I'm going to Alt or Option drag, Alt drag Windows or Option drag Mac, that layer mask up to duplicate it. So again, I'm going to just press the Option or Alt key, drag that mask up to duplicate it. Now I'm going to click on that mask on the multiply layer to, act, to make it the active portion of the layer, and I'm going to invert it. And that's very easy to do. All you need to do is press Control-I for invert on Windows or Command-I for invert on the Mac. And that inverts the, that layer mask. So what's masked now are the midtones, and what is unmasked is everything else versus the original layer mask. Now all we need to do is lower the opacity of those two layers to anywhere between about 5 and 25%. So I'm going to go down to about 23, 24, 25%. There we go. And same thing with the screen layer. Actually, I'm, I'm, varying, I'm lowering the opacity of these two layers. And there is our technique. Now I'll group those layers by shift-clicking them and pressing Command or Control G to group those layers. And I can just click the visibility icon to toggle that on or off. And no glow, there's the effect. The model separates out from the background and looks great. So you can, again, use anywhere between about 5 and 25%. I'm going to lower the opacity down to about 10%, just so you can see, even with a lesser amount of glow, or a lesser amount of this effect, how this, how effective this really is. So there's no effect, effect, no effect, effect. Subtle works great. And you can just choose by varying the amount how much you want. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, post comments in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. My name's Steve Weinrieb, and I will see you in my next video.